Hi, everyone. I'm Lisa D'Amico with the Rockland Arts Festival, and I have the pleasure today of speaking with David Green. David, welcome. Hi. Hi. Thank you. David, I would love for you to talk about the piece that you submitted um, to represent you in the festival. I really feel like it is such a far reaching in some terms, but also so there's a comfort in it because everyone can relate to it when they see it. Thank you very much, Lisa. It's one of it's one of my favorite pieces. Uh, I call it Agony and Ecstasy um, from the uh, movie. Uh, you know, about Michelangelo, you know, when will it be done? Julius II sort of asks him that and, and a couple of other things. Um, but to me, the, the, when I describe it, I, I say that the, the woman in the, in the foreground sort of represents rapture. Um, and, and the gentleman in the background, to, rep, to me, looks like he's doing a Machiavelli imitation. Be, because the setting is very interesting. The setting is an old chapel in Padua, Italy. Uh, it's older than the Sistine Chapel. Um, it's jotty. It's extremely uh, well taken care of. And so you have to um, sign up for a time to come in and stroll through the, the pardon my mind, uh, stroll through the um, the chapel. So, um the the shot i'm you know i'm looking around i'm saying well you know it's a nice chapel i'll take my usual tourist pictures of the nice chapel but i'd prefer looking at people and as i'm coming back around i i see these two sort of enter at the same time and before they got to that particular candid pose all right um they just sort of look like i should keep looking at them so i had my camera out and I started taking some shots and, um, you know, I said, okay, let's just see what happens. And then I realized that I had caught them in this dichotomy of expressions where she had just seen the face of God, right? And he's going, what is this? <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and so metaphorically, it represents people's various versions of truths, you know, which is where we are now. Um, two people can walk into the same place, see the same thing, and have two extremely oppositional points of view. And their faces show that. Now, in, in terms of that, um, I just, you know, made the app, took the aperture settings, so their faces would be what you see. And I decided to put it in black and white because I didn't want the distractions of the chapel itself to get in the way of seeing who they were at that particular moment. Now, 20 seconds later, they might have been two different people. I don't know if they were mother and and, and son. I, I don't know if they were two strangers that happened just to be aligned at that same time. But the photograph at that moment just captures to me um, human nature and, and how we look at the same thing at the same time and react differently to it. It is a brilliant piece. and. Whether you are taking a photograph of people or a landscape, um, I find you to be a very insightful storyteller. Thank you. So Thank I you. recommend everyone follow you. I recognize your work on social media before I even have to look at who posted it. It's I, that And I appreciate that. <laughs> you have a very unique aesthetic that um, really draws you draws me as a viewer in. Have you always had this aesthetic or did it evolve over time? I, I think it evolved over time in terms of my photography because I started doing sort of landscape things. And and um, I, I like the my photographs to have an impact. You know, I walk around, I see a lot of beautiful, soft photographs that sort of make me feel like I want to go to sleep. I want to have a photograph that says, oh, what's going on there? Um, you know, so for example, like the one immediately behind me, um, that the light captures a depth, okay, um, that makes those trees talk to you. They stand out. So it started that way. And then when I started realizing, I said, I want to do some more black and white things and people. I would walk around when we're traveling and going through cities and kind of look for people whose expressions or body positions 
had a story to tell. Um, and, and so that's sort of where I'm leaning towards now, uh, trying to use um, old black and white imagery, like from the Depression in the 40s, to kind of get a sense of who people are and how they feel and, and get that emotive quality uh, behind the human existence. It's wonderful. And talking from the other end of it, me as an artist, I find your work inspiring. You have a use of light that is, um, it's just genius. Like the, oh, the behind you right now, that horizontal ribbon of light that meet, where the sky meets the ground. Right. It's everything. Yeah. And, and again, you know, so much of it is timing, you know, and so much of it is luck. Um, that happens to be a, a park in Auckland, New Zealand. Um, and, and I happened to be at my brother-in-law's house, whose house, whose backyard borders the park. And it was just a cloudy day. And it was getting towards sunset. And the sun is behind me. Okay. And I'm looking and I happen to have my camera there because I, I love the I love those trees. But I I was just like, okay, you know, it's like, okay, I just need the right time and the right kind of light. And all of a sudden this happened. Mm -hmm. And then in, in the post-production part of it, uh, what I'm trying to do is to try to uh, minimize excessive uh, glare or, or any other kinds of uh, distractions from the actual attraction of um, what looks like a, a broccoli stem uh, sitting on my head <laughs> right now. Um, and so I was able to to get it so that there is actually a, a spotlight of sun. Uh, I'll just move out of the way a little bit. Uh, spotlight of sun on those trees. So it accentuates them uh, and and the bareness of the trunk as as compared to the fullness at the tops of these particular trees. So um, I think, you know, that's sort of what I'm looking for. And again, anything that sort of brings out the character of what's there. And, and trees have character. Cliffs have character. People have character. And I think that's what I'm attempting to do. Bring out the character. Well, you've done it. And it's been such a joy to speak with you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for this, Lisa, and we'll see you on February 4th.